The movie is set in the beautiful seaside town of Shaw Bay, which is under threat of a major commercial redevelopment. Town girl and realtor Erin will do anything to save Shaw Bay as it holds precious memories of her childhood and late parents. Erin's happy day is ruined when she discovers that Martha, the town's council leader, has set plans in motion to sell off their town's marina. She is disturbed by this and goes sulking to her boss, Mitch, who was her late parents' friend and has been there for her since their passing. Mitch is unbothered about the potential sale. He tries to convince Aaron that the redevelopment plans might be just what their town needs but she does not agree. Unlike their neighboring town Claremont, she wants Shaw Bay to retain its authenticity and preserve its cultural value in honor of her late parents who shared their love for Shaw Bay with her. She sets out to find a wealthy property buyer to make her biggest sale that will convince Martha that Shaw Bay can survive without modernization. She visits her friend and roommate, Harper, who owns the town seafood bistro. She shares her plans with her and Harper is ecstatic at the prospect of Erin finally making enough commission to get her own home and take proper care of herself. She accuses Erin of always thinking about others at her own expense. She tries to extract a firm promise from Erin to take proper care of herself before serving her food. Their tussle is interrupted by a handsome stranger with a British accent. The stranger is none other than the devilishly handsome Prince Theo, the heir to the Kingdom of Mordovia, who is in Shaw Bay to hide out from his father, the king, and his responsibilities as prince, which includes marrying the princess with a mouthful of a name. Harper is intrigued by Theo's accent, she cajoles him into pronouncing some words for her pleasure, and this leaves Aaron embarrassed at her friend. Theo obliges her request when he realizes that Harper wouldn't take no for an answer. His order for some salad and dislike for seafood leaves Aaron flummoxed on her friend's behalf. Theo is clueless and unaware that the bistro serves mainly seafood, the town's specialty, but Harper diffuses the situation and sends Theo off to sit outside, with the promise to whip up some food for him. Harper steals a look at him as he walks off, but Aaron is not impressed by his looks and perceived pedigree. Hugh Harper's surprise when Aaron decides to also have lunch outside with the claim to receive some fresh air. Outside, the refined prince, Theo is dismayed at Aaron's lack of manners whilst eating her sandwich. He offers her a handkerchief which she embarrassedly accepts. She is curious about the tea embroidered on the handkerchief and approaches him to find out more about him. Theo introduces himself to her, albeit without his royal title. He asks her to keep the kerchief as he doesn't want to encourage further relations with her. In a shot to escape Aaron, he flees the bistro but they still find themselves going the same way until Aaron allows him to go past her. Aaron arrives at her work and complains to Mitch about the odd British guy, Theo, that she met at Harper's Bistro. She doesn't anticipate finding Theo lurking around at her workplace and hunt of a suitable house in Shaw Bay. Mitch leaves Theo in Aaron's helpful realtor hands while he goes fishing. During consultations, Theo is suspicious of Aaron's intruding questions which she claims will help her find the perfect home for him. He is evasive and gives Aaron very little details about his life. She suspects that he is wealthy because his idea of a small house sounds relatively different from hers. Gregarious Bess declines the idea of Theo boarding in her guest house, with the claim that it's past check-in for new guests. Theo is taken aback by the weird rule, but when he casually mentions that Aaron recommended the guest house to him, Betsy suddenly lights up like a bulb and changes her mind. A call from home, or more precisely, the king, sours his mood. He ignores it as it reminds him that he has in fact gone AWOL, deserting his royal responsibilities. Theo wakes up disoriented the next morning to a stare from the dolphin painting hanging on the wall. The weather is perfect as he meets up with Aaron and they go to see the house she claims is perfect for him. On their walk to the property, Aaron tries to find out more about him but Theo is cautious not to give out much information about himself. He is unsatisfied with the house. He claims that money is no issue, but wants something else, exact size as this but smaller. It leaves Aaron confused, she confesses that she has a very high work success rate, and promises to get him a better house. Theo returns to the guest house to find Frank, his long-standing valet from the palace pestering Bess. Theo quickly drags Frank to the patio to stop him from blowing his cover, especially to the curious Bess. Frank faults him for playing a disappearing act on everyone including his father and friends. He has been sent by the king to bring Theo back home but this does not augur well with Theo. He informs Frank of his decision to reside privately in Shaw Bay, and while the realtor works on finding a suitable house for him, Theo informs him that they will continue to stay at Bess's. Frank is perplexed at Theo's decision to reside below his princely station. It's a Herculean task learning to address him by his given name rather than Sir. Meanwhile, Martha wouldn't give up on redeveloping the town. She approaches Aaron while they try to put up a sign for the town's annual event, and tries to convince her to support the plan but Aaron insists, that their town is perfect. Aaron gets into an argument with Theo as she takes him to see the second property. His avoidance of her questions annoys Aaron to no end, more so when he corrects her pronunciation. She goes off on him leaving Theo stunned at her bluntness. It is refreshing for him to see someone who stands up to him. He apologizes to her and all is well between them. It's still a no-show for Aaron as Theo hates the house and she is on the verge of giving up. 
But then it's inevitable as Theo has an invisible cloak wrapped around him which makes it difficult to figure out what he likes. Her friend, Harper tries to cheer her up with some clam chowder. At her insistence, they search for Theo online and conclude that he is the wealthy but unphotographed artist they find online. Their logic explains Theo's obvious wealth and private life. Erin is giddy with excitement when she finds the perfect home fit for an artist of Theo's supposed caliber. Theo is confused when she shows him a picture of an artist's haven. Erin is embarrassed at her mistake, she confesses to him that she looked him up online and confused him with the artist Theo Johnson. He does not appreciate the intrusion of his privacy. Angered, he storms out of her office. Theo regrets his actions and decides to apologize to Erin. He finds her at Harper's Bistro where she's threatening not to take him back. Harper tries to signal to her that Theo is behind her, but she realizes it when she has exhausted her steam, leaving her embarrassed. Theo ignores her outburst, he attributes his overtly private life to some issues he is currently facing. They reach a truce when he promises to cooperate with her so they can find a property for him. Back at the guest house, Frank and Bess have become good friends, and he helps her to do some chores as punishment for breaking her fish. Frank is surprised when he finds out from Bess that Aaron the realtor is indeed a lady. He is suspicious of the two who are out on a dinner date. He makes a plan to stop them from having a relationship so that Theo doesn't develop ties in Shaw Bay. Dinner between the duo goes well, Harper who is their server tries to play matchmaker and casually mentions Aaron's single status in front of Theo. She is embarrassed but Theo understands the feeling as he has been in her shoes. Aaron is curious but she stops herself from probing into his private life. The third house Aaron finds does not meet up with Theo's standards and it ends with another no from Theo which leaves Aaron disappointed. In a bid to buy more time, she decides to organize a picnic and showcase the beautiful Shaw Bay to Theo. When Frank hears about it the next morning, he is disturbed. He reminds Theo of his royal pedigree and the need to not get entangled with Aaron. Theo sees it differently from Frank, his royal life was more like a cage and he sees Shaw Bay as his opportunity to get back his life. Frank is stunned at Theo's seriousness, and it dawns on him that he might be fighting a lost battle. In the next scene, Aaron takes Theo round the pier. They are invited by Mitch who is fishing to join him. He tries to teach Theo while also inviting him to the town's annual picnic. He throws the bomb on Aaron and he informs her that she will be giving a speech at the event. She reluctantly agrees while Theo laughs as he finds the obvious terror on her face funny. She tells him about her late parents, their love for Shaw Bay which also influenced her. They are interrupted by the struggling fishing rod. He is enamored in Aaron's eyes and loses focus. The fishing rod falls into the water separating them and they laugh. They have a wonderful time at their picnic. Aaron tells him more about why she seriously needs to sell a house to forestall redevelopment plans. Theo gives her a few tips to help her ace her speech at the annual picnic. They become closer and share a moment when Theo helps Aaron to wipe off some crumbs from her mouth. Aaron is reminded of how rich Theo is when they stop to get some ice cream on the street. He talks about the various cities and cuisines he has tasted. He is surprised that the street ice cream tastes just as nice. Aaron notices a tiara from a jewelry store, and they go in to check it out on Theo's insistence. She is taken aback by his extensive knowledge on jewelry, all thanks to his royal background. A moment passes between them as Theo places the tiara on Aaron's head, just like a prince and his princess. Frank is funnily on their trail and he watches them from behind a tree. He is disturbed at the blossoming romance between the two capable of ruining the royal's plans. Aaron is sorry as she returns the tiara back to the cellar, but she does not take Theo seriously when he offers to pay for it. Back at the guest house, Theo is tired of the numerous calls from his father. He is further annoyed when Frank confronts him on his unbecoming behavior of eating ice cream on the streets, having picnics, and fishing. Theo is incensed at Frank's intrusion but Frank reminds him of his responsibility to his people which he cannot walk away from. In the next scene, it's Operation Showcase Shaw Bay as Aaron takes Theo rowing to explore more of Shaw Bay. They have fun on the water and the chemistry between them is undeniable. While walking on the shore, Aaron tells him about her ex-boyfriend and Theo assures her that it is his loss for losing out on her. He is quick to correct himself that he missed out on the lovely, Shaw Bay. In a summer moment, he tells her about his late mother who inspired him to visit Shaw Bay. They share their experiences of loss. The sight of the seals on the water reminds him of the pressures and lack of privacy in his life as a prince. Aaron is sympathetic and she advises him to forget all about his life and just enjoy the day. In town the next day, Aaron is devastated when she finds a notice for sale of the marina by the council. She confronts Martha about it but she does not budge on her decision to continue with the redevelopment plans which will create more jobs, homes and rejuvenate the town. Mitch and Theo agree with her but Aaron is concerned with the plans ruining the town. She decides to show Theo around the marina to understand her better but they are followed by Frank. They arrive at Aaron's spot and Theo is stunned at the beautiful view surrounded by blue sparkling water. She shares with him her childhood dream of living in a house with the view and Theo is convinced of her persistent refusal to the redevelopment plans. Aaron comments on his untied shoelaces, Theo bends down to tie them properly but Frank thinks Theo is about to propose to Aaron, and he comes flying out of hiding to stop Theo. He is embarrassed when Theo corrects him and introduces him to Aaron. 
Aaron leaves them to continue their squabbles when they are unable to get the stories of their supposed friendship straight. On their way down their hike, Frank confronts Theo on his growing relationship with Aaron which is noticeable by the enamored look he gives to Aaron. Theo insists that they have just a business relationship but Frank begs to differ. On Frank's advice to come clean to Aaron about his status, Theo refuses on the grounds that people change when they know he is a prince. Later at the guest house, they are accosted by Bess who confesses that she saw the royal uniform in Frank's room and mistakes Frank to be royalty. Frank lets the cat out of the basket and informs her that Theo is truly the royal prince while Theo gives him the side eye with a silent plea to keep quiet. The new information both surprises and intrigues Bess. She is stopped from informing Aaron who she considers her daughter and Theo promises to do the reveal by himself. Aaron is at crossroads on the marina issue and finding a home for Theo. Her friend Harper is sad that the redevelopment plans if carried out will likely affect her business. She mentions purchasing the marina if they had the money to do so and this sets the wheel running in Aaron's head and she gets to work. She gets the idea for Theo to buy the land including the marina and build his perfect home, thereby fulfilling her wish and getting his dream home. Theo approves her plans and even dissuades Aaron from having the feeling that he is at a disadvantage. This leaves Aaron overjoyed at the prospect of her wish coming true. She jumps on Theo and gives him a hug before she regains control and opts to shake his hands. She visits Theo at the guest house to return his handkerchief from their first meeting and also invites him to a party at Harper's Bistro. Frank mentions that Theo dislikes seafood but they are surprised when Theo agrees to give seafood another trial at the party. The duo beam at each other with stars in their eyes while Frank watches them in annoyance. In the next scene, the party is a hit and Theo surprisingly enjoys the crab cake. Aaron and Theo share a dance together which leaves Harper and Bess eager for a romance story between them. Meanwhile, Frank is unhappy with the scene. He hints that Theo is mandated by law to marry the princess chosen by the king. Bess is shocked when she learns that Theo is yet to be acquainted with her. She schools him on love but their conversation is interrupted by Frank's phone. Frank interrupts their dance and delivers terrible news to Theo. In a bid to force Theo home, the king has cut him off from all the accounts. Theo is sad at the development, but Frank is despaired when he realizes that Theo is more concerned about Aaron and the botch plans for the marina rather than himself. He plans to work out something and leaves the party with Frank. With no luck changing his father's mind, he is forced to deliver the bad news to Aaron. She takes the news surprisingly very well and is more concerned with how he will survive. This endears her to Theo more and while they make plans to make a down payment for a smaller house for Theo, Aaron worries about the effects of the impending marina sale on it. A light bulb goes off in Theo's head. He calls out to Aaron to stall Martha while he promises to try out something new. Frank is surprised at Theo's genius plan. He agrees to obey his father and return home on the condition that his father buys the marina for the town and especially for Aaron. Frank is touched by his selflessness and the need to see others happy at his own expense. Back at Harper's Bistro, Aaron is in deep thoughts and worried about the marina but Harper cheers her up that they will get through it. Her mood is transformed when Theo finds her at the bistro and shares the good news with her. He advises her to draw up the papers for the sale but Aaron is curious at how he was able to get the funds. Theo is hesitant to tell Aaron the truth, he promises to tell her some other time. Aaron objects but he is saved by Harper calling out for Aaron. The mood at the guesthouse changes when Bess learns that Frank and Theo are leaving Shaw Bay. She is especially sad that her new flower partner will be leaving also. Theo's deceit finally catches up with him when he is unable to sign the contract for the marina because the name written is unfortunately the fake name he gave Aaron. He tries to explain to her but they are interrupted by the arrival of a car, which rouses interest among the locals. Theo is surprised to see his father the king alight from the car, and at Aaron's request, he introduces her to the king and informs her that he is indeed a prince. Aaron walks off in anger but Theo runs after her. He tries to placate her but the king worsens the situation by mentioning that Theo has a princess waiting for him back home. Aaron is hurt and leaves him with his father. The royals go on a walk along the pier followed by their security. The king is surprised about the affection Theo has for the town. He informs Theo that he stayed in Shaw Bay with his late queen long before Theo was born and he holds the same sentiments with him. This is news to Theo, he promises to be the true son and heir to Mordovia if his father helps him save the town. It's an emotional moment between father and son as the king pledges to respect his wishes if he desires to relinquish his title and remain in Shaw Bay. At the town's picnic event, Aaron is nervous about her speech and also embarrassed by Theo's reveal but Mitch and Harper try their best to calm her down. Bess approaches her and gives her the full details about what happened with Theo. Aaron is amazed at the extent Theo went just to make her happy, she decides to talk to him but is called up by Mitch to give her speech. She is emboldened on the stage when she cites Theo in the crowd and goes ahead to deliver a heartwarming speech. She approaches Theo who is donned in his royal outfit. He fulfills his promise of a gift to her and places the tiara from the shop they visited. Theo informs her that his father has agreed to buy the marina. Aaron is sad at the prospect of not seeing Theo again but he reassures her that his father has agreed to allow him stay in Shebe, 
and return to Mordovia on official visits. It's an emotional moment between the two as Theo asks her to accompany him on his visits to Mordovia. Harper urges her to say yes, and she says yes and agrees to help him build his dream home. They share a passionate moment, to Frank's dismay. While he complains of their public display of affection being unbecoming of a prince, Bess takes him by surprise, and they share a private moment, which leaves him stunned. 